Hi, I'm Dan Bridges, Superintendent of School District 203, and I'm here today to tell you about an exciting new initiative in our school district. This is what education used to look like, a one-room schoolhouse, teachers seated in the front of the classroom, lecturing a classroom full of first graders through 12th graders. And this tablet is the only tablet those students ever knew. Our world has changed. Our students' needs have changed, and the way we educate them has to change with it. Today, our students and our teachers have access to technology that allows them to collaborate with students in their classroom, in their school, throughout the community, and even throughout the world. I'd like to share with you a little bit more about District 203's Digital Learning Initiative. This classroom is an example of a typical classroom you might find in any one of our elementary schools in District 203. This tablet is just one example of the type of technology our students may be using in our classrooms every single day. Technology today plays an important role in all of our classrooms. It enables students to be self-directed learners, learn at their own pace, and it allows them to collaborate more efficiently, more effectively, and more often. Beginning this fall in several of our schools and several of our classrooms throughout District 203, we will begin to expose students to even more technology and greater access to technology. The Digital Learning Initiative is a combination of education and technology, a strategic approach focused on professional learning, data and feedback, content and instruction, and communication brought together to ensure that we're doing what's best for our students in our classrooms and providing them the best opportunity to learn. The Digital Learning Initiative in District 203 will allow our team and other stakeholders to provide input to the administration on the use of technology and the role those devices might play in our classrooms in the future. The vision of District 203 is to build a passion for lifelong learning for all of our students. Technology, today and tomorrow, will play an important role in ensuring that that vision is realized. We would like to share with you our vision and recommendations related to digital learning in District 203. Presenting will be Dr. Jen Hester, our Chief Academic Officer, Joe Jaroszewski, our Director of IT Infrastructure and the Project Manager for this effort, Jane Willard, our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Melissa Hampton, our Director of Professional Learning, and me, Roger Brunel, the Chief Information Officer for the District. After a great deal of effort, analysis, and discussion, we are excited to address the following outcomes with you. Our three outcomes are shown on this slide. We will provide you with an overview of the Digital Learning Initiative Program and the associated rationale. We will also share with you and review our recommended approach for District 203, as well as present the strategies for professional learning and the introduction of blended learning into our learning environments. Our work and recommendations for the Digital Learning Initiative are directly related to two District 203 strategic blueprint commitments and have strong connections to other commitments throughout our strategic blueprint. Online and blended learning opportunities provide students with an engaging environment that meets their diverse learning needs and prepares them for college and career experiences. These learning opportunities allow students to have control over the pace, place, and time of their learning and increase students' abilities to become self-directed learners, collaborative workers, and global contributors. Online courses or access to additional curriculum content in the blended environment increases district resources available to serve students, creating opportunity and efficiencies. As District 203 continues to strive to transform student learning through the adoption of blended online and digital content delivery, it is important to develop and implement a student-focused, achievable, and sustainable digital learning strategy. This strategy will provide students with universal access to digital curriculum, technology tools, and ecosystems that are effectively integrated into the teaching and learning experience. We believe that our digital learning strategy will engage and enhance student learning in new ways and better prepare students for post-secondary education and careers. We will begin by taking you to a graphic that you have seen many times. This graphic represents the interconnectedness of content, instructional methods, and the technology and tools that are an essential part of the learning environment to transform learning for students. In the digital learning environment, all of these elements come together the content, instructional methods, and technology and tools to enhance the learning experience in a way that was not previously possible. Over the past several months, District 203 conducted a digital learning pilot in which our teachers were able to begin their journey of transforming teaching and learning for students. Let's take a closer look at the scope of the pilot along with the results that led us to the recommendation that we will present.
Our initiative began last fall in its pilot phase and as you can see was conducted at 13 of our schools and across 41 selected classes, including not only our core curricular classrooms, but also areas such as dual language, special education, and our honors courses and classes so that we could capture a wide array of feedback. 52 teachers and approximately 1,500 students actively participated in the pilot. We had pilot teachers and students at elementary, junior high, and the high school level. Apple, Microsoft, and Google ecosystems were piloted at each grade level band. Our pilot began at the start of the school year and ended in January. Our pilot teachers and students still have access to the technology and continue to transform learning in our classrooms today. This slide summarizes the key efforts that have been completed as part of the pilot phase of this initiative. One of the most important elements that impacted the success of the pilot was the professional learning that was provided for staff. Professional learning began in the spring of 2014 for our Digital Learning Initiative teaching staff and continued through the summer into the school year. This focused learning provided teachers with the instructional tools necessary to begin to transform learning for students in a digital environment. We begin with basic overviews of best practice in a blended environment and instructional models such as SAMR and then moved into more teacher-led professional learning of classroom applications and instructional shifts. Our tech team was very prepared and responsive from the onset of the pilot. Our team obtained, prepped, and deployed approximately 1,500 devices. They also responded to any and all issues that came up ensuring that teacher and student devices were operating at all times. Teams worked to create feedback collection mechanisms such as benchmarks, teacher, student, and parent surveys, along with teacher logs. Additionally, we reached out to many other school districts holding informative discussions on digital learning and sharing common ideas, directions, and experiences. We had our three pilot ecosystem vendors visit us to share the future vision of their products and services and education. We created financial models as well as formed a committee of digital learning teachers to review the pilot findings, data, and insights to come to our recommendation. Recommendations were then subsequently vetted and refined by the district cabinet and administrative team. Indicators of success were established prior to the start of the initiative for the purpose of monitoring and assessing the success of the pilot. These indicators were created by a team of key administrators using the ISTE standards and industry best practices in blended learning. To assess each indicator, we collected and analyzed data through weekly teacher logs, classroom observations, and teacher, student, and parent surveys. We also formally and informally collected feedback at each professional learning session to gauge progress and next steps. Now that we shared where we started, what the pilot consisted of, and what was measured, we would like to share some of the lessons learned along the way that are directly tied to our instructional framework for transforming learning for students. In the area of content, we learned that we have a very strong curriculum in place and an opportunity to enhance our curriculum by breaking down walls for students and teachers by engaging them in resources other than what we only find on our classroom shelves. The teachers in the pilot had an opportunity to consume and create digital content. We provided course and grade level specific supplemental applications and content to review and integrate into instruction. Teachers shared that digital supplemental resources allowed for a broader differentiated and personalized experience for teachers and students. When we looked at content from a student perspective, students had the ability to consume and create content that demonstrated learning in new and equitable ways. Students reported that they were better able to integrate information from multiple sources. When we think about the lessons learned surrounding instruction, teachers reported that they could better instruct utilizing online collaborative structures and could plan for more personalized approaches, providing increased real-time feedback. Teachers shared that they could design lessons that offered more voice and choice. The data showed that both students and teachers reported higher levels of motivation and engagement in this blended instructional environment. When looking at SAMR, the primary instructional model we used to evaluate how teachers were using technology in their instructional practice. Teachers went from simple substitution, paper to digital, 
to augmentation, paper to digital with editing, for example, and at times even redefinition, designing opportunities that could not occur without technology in a short amount of time. From a back-end technology perspective, the work that has been completed over the last several years has laid the foundation for this initiative. Programs such as the implementation of our learning management system, or Canvas, the BYOD pilot, the district-wide wireless network upgrade, our new web-based 24-hour help desk system, as well as other advances in technology support and management have positioned us well for this moment. In other words, we're ready. In summary, our teachers very successfully began the journey of transforming learning for students. Offering a digital learning experience in District 203 enhances our opportunity to improve the ability to differentiate, customize, and personalize learning for students, increase student ownership over place, pace, and pathway, provide students with differentiated formative and summative assessment opportunities, increase student engagement and motivation, improve collaboration between student to student and teacher to student, prepare for college and career, and narrow the digital divide by ensuring equal access to technology for all. The pilot proved that teachers and students are ready to embrace teaching and learning in a blended environment. The digital learning recommendations were developed at the conclusion of the Digital Learning Initiative pilot. The recommendations are a result of the data collected, input from a key committee, and input from district administration. The recommendations also take into consideration other important priorities found in our strategic blueprint. These recommendations span over three years and strategically phase in digital learning in District 203. In February, a select team of digital learning initiative teachers and administrators work together to review data and feedback and share experiences to determine the best ecosystem and device for each grade level band. The team came to consensus that Google Apps for Education was the recommended ecosystem and that the Chromebook was the preferred device for grades 6 through 12 teachers and students. The Google ecosystem provides efficiencies and ease for communication and collaboration within and outside of the classroom. The Google ecosystem is web-based. Students can access everything from the cloud and from multiple devices. The Chromebook device is easy to use and easy to support. The year one recommendation is to implement the Google Apps for Education ecosystem at both high schools. Based on the recommendation, every high school student would be issued a Chromebook at the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. This recommendation would not replace all existing technology at the schools. We recognize that there will still be a small presence of Apple and Windows devices at these levels based on student and curricular needs. For example, in specialty areas like CAD and programming labs, we will retain non-Google environments such as Windows to best support those applications. The recommendation also includes expanding the digital learning initiative at both the junior high and the elementary. We recommend adding a grade level team using Chromebooks at Washington and Kennedy Junior Highs to build capacity and leadership at these buildings in preparation for the year two recommendations. We recommend reclaiming a large majority of iPads from the high schools to distribute to our elementary schools in order to continue the momentum of transforming learning. The 2015-2016 recommendations also include resuming the refresh of our aged staff devices. Finally, we are also recommending that we increase technology fees at the high school from $29 to $50 per student. Here are the recommendations for the 2016-2017 school year. During this year, we will implement the Google ecosystem and Chromebooks across all junior high schools, as well as continue with the elementary digital learning initiative program. As we showed in our 9 to 12 recommendations, where curriculum needs for specialty areas such as art and project lead the way, we will retain our non-Google environments. We would also reclaim a large majority of iPads from the junior high level to distribute to the elementary level in the same manner as would have been done the prior year when reclaiming the iPads from the high schools. Finally, we are also recommending that we increase technology fees at the junior high level from $29 to $50 per student. In year three of the program, which is the 2017-2018 school year, 
we would implement at the elementary levels. For this level, Apple was the recommended ecosystem based upon its ability to meet the needs of learners at this level. The Chromebooks ecosystem was a strong runner-up at the 3 to 5 level. After further discussion and review, it was agreed that the K-2 students would remain at a 2 to 1 ratio with the selected ecosystem of Apple, while grades 3 to 5 would move to a 1 to 1 ratio in either the Apple or Google ecosystem. Based upon advances which Google is making in the education space, along with the rapid growth in educational tools and applications becoming available in the Google Apps for Education environment, we want to reserve a final recommendation on the 3 to 5 levels and monitor over the next two years as our pilot program did provide feedback that Google Apps for Education could be viable at those levels. Finally, we are also recommending that we increase technology fees at the elementary level from $29 to $50 per student. We have been intentional in setting realistic and achievable expectations for the first two years of implementation. Teachers will move along a continuum of learning, allowing time for them to familiarize themselves with the technologies and take advantage of professional learning to assist them in this transition. For the first outcome, we want to ensure that students and teachers use the technology to collect and use information. This means students are able to use the technology to research new information independently from a variety of sources. Teachers will not only allow students to utilize the technology, but they will also use and model this practice. Teachers and students will utilize Canvas and Google Apps for Education in order to build a richer environment for communication and expand opportunities to better communicate student to student and teacher to student while using different forms of media beyond traditional face-to-face -face interactions. Outcome three is critical and focuses on digital citizenship. This outcome will ensure safe, ethical and legal practices for both teachers and students. The final outcome was created using the SAMR model. The SAMR model describes four levels of technology integration that increases in complexity. This outcome ensures that technology is used to begin to transform learning in the classroom, whether it be through substitution, which creates efficiencies for teachers and students, such as using Google Docs rather than paper and pencil to create a paper, or through augmentation, which acts as a direct substitution tool, but begins to move us up the SAMR model by using Google Docs to write a paper, but the students may also edit, share, and save their work in this collaborative environment. These teaching and learning expectations are appropriate for all teachers in the first year of implementation. We are well aware that many of our educators will go beyond these implementation expectations. Our administrators will be responsible for monitoring the expectations at the building level. From a technology perspective, in the first year of implementation at each level, we will provide devices, continue to enhance technology infrastructure tools, and support to ensure the implementation at each level is successful. During the second school year following deployment, expectations will move towards more transformation of the learning environment with teachers increasing their levels of expertise and utility in technology and tools. As the journey continues, we see our teachers facilitating more personalized learning experience for our students that translate into increased student engagement, demonstrable benefits in the area of creative thinking, innovative approach and heightened capabilities in collaboration, content creation, communication, and development of deeper knowledge in subject areas. As we move further along in our digital learning journey, we see opportunities to potentially engage our District 203 students in our technology support processes, such as help desk, genius bar type support, break fix, etc. We have had discussions with school districts in our area and other states who have embraced this model with significant success. Additionally, we will continue to enhance our online and self-service support tools and processes. Knowing that professional learning is crucial to the success of implementation, we have designed an ongoing and phased approach to professional learning for our teachers as they progress in their digital learning journey. In the first year of implementation, professional learning is designed for high school educators and we will expand professional learning opportunities each year to account for the grade band in implementation. We will begin in the spring of this year with an awareness session. We will work with building leadership to introduce blended learning and the implementation of one-to-one. -one. This is where we will work with teachers to make sure they are aware, 
understand why we are moving to one-to-one, -to -one, and begin to know how their classroom will look different. Then, in the summer, we will engage teachers in a summer intensive. During the summer intensive, teachers will focus on best practice instruction and preparing for students as they enter in a one-to-one -one environment. As we know, professional learning cannot start and end with just a training, so we have plans to provide ongoing supports for teachers through additional training sessions, teacher-led sessions, and other job embedded and coaching structures. We know that for this to be successful, teachers will need support structures along the way. In designing the professional learning, we pulled from our lessons learned. We learned a great deal about the professional learning that we engaged pilot teachers in this year. Teachers reported that the general setup of our professional learning was well received. It was recommended that we put more emphasis in a few areas such as student deployment and that we definitely need to continue choice and collaboration structures. Finally, we heard that the idea of emphasis on instruction is important as we look to truly transform learning and to stay mindful that we have just touched the surface to what is possible. We know that in the time of the pilot, Digital Learning Initiative teachers overwhelmingly supported moving forward and being a part of supporting other teachers in their professional learning. The listed topics that will be included in the three-phased approach surfaced is what will have the greatest impact for teachers in helping them to be successful as they begin to transform learning in a one-to-one -one environment and were created in collaboration with the Digital Learning Initiative teachers and leaders of staff development. Our umbrella topic for all of our professional learning will be best practice in blended learning and personalization for students. Our main goal is to ensure that teachers feel confident and capable when they walk in the classroom. We will focus attention on blended and digital instructional models, make sure our teachers are ready to teach and model digital citizenship to ensure safe, ethical, and legal internet usage, and are ready to implement Canvas in new ways. As mentioned, we will put more emphasis in a few areas such as student deployment and device usage. We will ensure that all teachers are comfortable with the Google ecosystem for transforming learning and will focus on classroom management topics such as, do students need to be on the technology the entire time they are in my classroom? Finally, we plan to continue choice and collaboration structures throughout and as teachers practice and apply newly learned information. For more information regarding specific outcomes, please refer to Board Docs for the professional learning document provided. We will include all teachers and administrators in the outlined three phases of professional learning. The professional learning will include structures that are face-to-face, -face, online, and ongoing. In addition, we plan to train and support digital learning leadership coaches to become Google Apps for Education certified and leaders in digital and blended learning. Finally, we also plan to engage administrators in additional training so that they can develop a working knowledge of the Google ecosystem and blended learning models in order to effectively monitor and support the implementation at their building. This slide shows the total gross costs of the recommended approach. You can see two models over the five-year cost timeline. The top model illustrates the cost of a recommendation assuming that K-5 continues to move forward with the Apple ecosystem well, the bottom model reflects costs should we consider the Google Apps for Education ecosystem and Chromebook devices for grades three through five in the third year. The costs for digital learning initiative devices are assumed lease costs based on a four-year device life cycle. This slide shows the net cost of the recommended approach. In year one, it is recommended that high school tech fees permanently increase to $50 per student and are centralized to help defray one-to-one -one program costs at the high school level. Junior high and elementary tech fees remain at the current $29 per student level and are not applied to the one-to-one -one program. In year two, it is recommended that junior high tech fees permanently increase to $50 per student and are centralized to help defray digital learning initiative program costs at the junior high school level. Elementary tech fees remain at the current $29 per student level and are not applied to the digital learning initiative program. In year three, it is recommended that elementary tech fees permanently increase to $50 per student and are centralized to help defray digital learning initiative program costs at this level. By this time, all student tech fees will be centralized and applied to offset overall digital learning initiative program costs. Finally, we have included an average of what has been traditionally budgeted for the IT area for teacher and student devices as a benchmark to demonstrate total net costs at the bottom of each table. 
On this slide, you can see local district student tech fees compared to current District 203 student tech fees. Note that District 203 tends to be lower than other districts. To reiterate from the previous slide, any approved increase in student tech fees will be applied on a grade level basis starting the year that grade level implements the Digital Learning Initiative. If approved, this timeline represents the work that will take place from now until the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. The first step is to make recommendations to the Board of Education and seek approval. If approved, Learning Services and IT will begin the planning phase for implementation. Professional learning will begin with a spring awareness session and summer intensive sessions will begin in late June. Professional learning will continue offering summer intensive sessions in July and August, allowing for multiple options to fit with teachers' summer schedules. Devices will be prepped and ready for deployment in August. Learning Services and IT will work with high school administration to ensure that teachers are prepared and devices are ready for a successful deployment. Now for a review of the recommendations. We are recommending that Google Apps for Education and Chromebooks be implemented at the high school level for the 2015-2016 school year and that we increase technology fees to support the implementation. During the 2016-2017 school year, Junior High would also implement Google Apps for Education and Chromebook devices. We also propose increasing the Junior High tech fees. Elementary would follow Junior High with implementing a 2 to 1 ratio of iPads with the Apple ecosystem at the K2 level and either iPads or the Chromebook with the Google Apps for Education to all students in grades 3 through 5 at the beginning of the 2017-2018 school year. The elementary technology fees would also be increased. Thank you for viewing the District 203 Digital Learning Presentation.